Today is the uh, 16th of August, uh, and we come to Majima Nikaya Sutta 69, Gulisani Sutta, about Gulisani. Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha in the bamboo grove, the squirrel sanctuary. Now, on that occasion, a monk named Gulisani, a forest dweller of lax behavior, had come on a visit to stay in the midst of the Sangha for some business or other. Verbal Sariputta addressed the monks with reference to the monk Gulisani thus, Friends, when a forest-dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, he should be respectful and deferential towards his companions in the holy life. If he is disrespectful and undeferential towards his companions in the holy life, there will be those who would say of him, what has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is disrespectful and undeferential towards his companions in the holy life? Since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha should be respectful and deferential towards his companions in the holy life. Stop here for a moment. So here we have a monk uh, who stays in the forest uh, and then he had come to this monastery uh, to stay with the other monks but he didn't know how to behave. Lah. So Verbal Sariputta being the uh, most uh, uh, considered the, like the, the most senior uh, monk uh, uh, after the Buddha, he criticize this monk, uh, but not directly. Uh, he's saying that a uh, uh, forest monk uh, should be respectful and deferential towards his fellow monks. Uh, otherwise, what's the use of his staying in the forest? Uh, he does as he likes, he's disrespectful and all that. Uh, then uh, what follows uh, is a list uh, of uh, good behavior uh, expected of a uh, monk. Uh, so all this, uh, the following, uh, everything in this sutta is very good uh, advice uh, for a monk on how to behave. Uh, and he continued. When a forest dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, he should be skilled in good behavior regarding seeds. Thus, I shall sit down in such a way that I do not encroach upon elder monks and do not deny new monks a seat. If he is not skilled in good behavior regarding seats, there will be those who would say of him, what has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he does not even know what pertains to good behavior. Since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha should be skilled in good behavior regarding seats. When a forest-dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, he should not enter the village too early or return late in the day. If he enters the village too early and returns late in the day, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest-dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he enters the village too early and returns late in the day? Since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha should not enter the village too early or return late in the day. When a forest-dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, he should not go before the meal or after the meal to visit families. If he goes before the meal or after the meal to visit families, there will be those who would say of him, Surely this venerable forest dweller, while dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, must be used to making untimely visits, since he behaves thus when he has come to the Sangha. Since there will be those who would say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, should not go before the meal or after the meal to visit families. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So this must be the list of all these uh, faults huh, of this forest-dwelling monk. Huh? A forest dwelling monk, uh, he stays alone uh, and he practices meditation. Uh, but uh, in the Buddha's uh, Vinaya, a monk is supposed to stay with other monks uh, uh, and um, learn from a 
Acharya. Acharya is a teacher lah, for five years lah, before he uh, can go out and live alone. Lah. So apparently this monk, lah, since his uh, behavior lah, is not up to standard, lah, probably he did not stay with other monks or he did not um, bother to learn lah, from his teacher. Lah, lah. So he was not respectful towards other monks. Lah. And then uh, he doesn't know uh, where, is, where he should sit. Uh, he sits where elder monks, uh, more senior monks, uh, are supposed to sit. And then uh, he denies new monks uh, their, their seats and all that. Uh. And then thirdly, uh, he enters the village too early and returns late in the day. When a monk enters the village, uh, it means uh, generally it's for arms, uh, for uh, arms round. Uh. So a monk should only enter the village uh, after dawn, uh, after the sun has come up. Uh. So in Malaysia, it's about 7 a.m. Uh, uh, and uh, because uh, if he enters before dawn, uh, that is too dark. Uh, and uh, one or two nights ago, uh, we heard about this uh, monk uh, who was standing beside that woman. Uh, uh, and uh, when the, he didn't know uh, he was standing beside her uh, until the lightning flash. Uh, and suddenly she saw him and screamed. Uh, so a monk should not uh, go before dawn. Uh, and return late in the day. He should not come back uh, uh, afternoon. Pinapata uh, uh, time, uh, arms round time. Uh, it's from dawn until noon. Uh, when the, the sun is at the highest. Uh, in Malaysia it will be 1 uh, p.m. Uh, so he can he should only go on Pinapata uh, between 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh, and come back during that time. Uh. Nowadays you have fake monks uh, and rotten monks uh, who go to the to the uh, to to beg uh, for money uh, uh, even at night. Uh. So if lay people know the Vinaya a bit, uh, then they would not give him money. Uh. And then this uh, one, two, then the fourth one. He should not go before the meal or after the meal to visit families. Monks are supposed to uh, have renounced uh, and uh, not to associate with lay people. Uh, and uh, uh, he should not uh, go and visit families uh, either before the meal or after the meal unless there's a good reason. Uh, they need him for advice or something. Uh, he should not, as he likes, uh, go... Uh, and go go to his own family or uh, go to other people's family uh, and associate too much uh, with families. Uh, uh. When a forest dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the in the Sangha, he should not be haughty and personally vain. If he is haughty and personally vain, there will be those who would say of him, Surely this venerable forest dweller, while dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, must generally be haughty and personally vain. Since he behaves thus when he comes to the Sangha, since there will be those who would say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha should not be haughty and personally vain. When a forest-dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, he should not be rough-tongued and loose-spoken. If he is rough-tongued and loose-spoken, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is rough-tongued and loose-spoken? Since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha should not be rough-tongued and loose-spoken. Stop it for a moment. So here, a monk should not be arrogant, haughty and vain. I uh, think, uh, think very greatly of himself. Lah. Maybe this monk, uh, he's been staying in the forest. He thinks he's a forest monk. Lah. And other people are not. Lah. Uh, and also should not be, a monk should not be rough tongue and loose spoken. Lah. Talk too much lah, and talk in a rough manner. Lah. Uh, the Buddha says a uh, good speech uh, should be gently spoken lah. Mm. and uh, beneficial. Lah. When a forest-dwelling monk comes to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, he should be easy to correct and should associate with good friends. If he is difficult to correct and associates with bad friends, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest-dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is difficult to correct and associates with bad friends? 
since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk who has come to the Sangha and is living in the Sangha, should be easy to correct and should associate with good friends. Uh, stop it for a moment. Uh. So here, uh, uh, a monk, uh, if he wants to practice the holy path well, uh, he should associate with those uh, who uh, practice uh, uh, very diligent in their practice. Uh. He should not associate with those uh, who don't want to practice. Uh. There will be some monks uh, who are not interested to practice and uh, they talk a lot. Uh. And if a monk dwells with them, uh, he is influenced by them uh, and his behavior also becomes like them. Uh. So if a monk wants to practice uh, well, uh, he should, should associate with other monks uh, who practice well uh, and then they will inspire him uh, to practice better and also they will not waste their time uh, talking and joking and all that. Uh. A forest dwelling monk should guard the doors of his sense faculties. If he does not guard the doors of his sense faculties, there would be those who would say of him, what has this venerable forest dweller gained? But he's dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he does not guard the doors of his sense faculties. Since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should guard the doors of his sense faculties. A forest dwelling monk should be moderate in eating. If he is not moderate in eating, there will be those who would say this of him. What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is not moderate in eating? Since there will be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should be moderate in eating. A forest dwelling monk should be devoted to wakefulness. If he is not devoted to wakefulness, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone? in the forest doing as he likes, since he is not devoted to wakefulness. Since there will be those who say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should be devoted to wakefulness. I'll stop it for a moment. Uh, this last three uh, uh, is part of the charana, uh, conduct uh, or practice uh, of, the, of a monk uh, in the holy path, uh, guarding the, the, the doors of the six sense faculties. Uh, uh, not to pay too much attention uh, to sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch uh, and thoughts. Uh, and then eating moderately, uh, just enough. Uh, uh, and then uh, devoted to wakefulness, uh, not to sleep so much, uh, to try to reduce sleep uh, as much as he can. A uh. forest dwelling monk should be energetic. If he is not energetic, there will be those who would say of him, what has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest? doing as he likes, since he is lazy. Since there would be those who would say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk should be energetic. A forest-dwelling monk should be established in mindfulness. If he is unmindful, there will be those who would say of him, what has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is unmindful. Since there will be those who would say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk should be established in mindfulness. A forest dwelling monk should be concentrated. If he is not concentrated, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is not concentrated? Since there will be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should be concentrated. A forest dwelling monk should be wise. If he is not wise, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he is not wise? Since there will be those who say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should be wise. Stop here for a moment. So here, a uh, monk uh, should be energetic, uh, not lazy. Uh, and then if he's energetic, uh, he will be mindful uh, and concentrated. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, be wise. Uh. A forest dwelling monk should apply himself to the higher Dhamma and the higher Vinaya. If he does not apply himself to the higher Dhamma and to the higher Vinaya, there will be those who say of him, What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he, has, he does not apply himself to the higher Dhamma and the higher Vinaya? Since there will be those who say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should apply himself to the higher Dhamma and to the higher Vinaya. Stop here for a moment. Now, this higher Dhamma is Abhidhamma, and higher Vinaya is Abhi Vinaya. You must remember uh, this uh, when these suttas were spoken. Uh, at that time, there was no uh, Abhidhamma as we know nowadays. Uh, we don't have the Abhidhamma Pitaka. The Abhidhamma Pitaka was compiled later. Uh, 
And the Abhidhamma uh, Pitaka, uh, the meaning of the Abhidhamma Pitaka, uh, the Abhidhamma there uh, means analysis of the Dhamma. Uh, and here is different. Here this uh, Abhidhamma uh, refers to higher Dhamma. Uh, this, and this higher Dhamma refers to the higher teachings of the Buddha. Uh, generally, uh, the higher teachings of the core teachings of the Buddha, the most important teachings of the Buddha, uh, the Buddha says uh, in certain suttas, uh, are the, what is called the 37 Bodhipakya Dhammas. Uh, the Noble Eightfold Path uh, can also be described uh, in terms of the 37 Bodhipakya Dhammas. Uh, we will come to that later. Uh, requisites of Enlightenment, uh, 37 Requisites of Enlightenment. Uh, uh, the, the, this is uh, most likely uh, uh, what this higher Dhamma refers to. Uh, Nothing to do with the uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka because that was compiled several, several uh, hundred years later. And then the higher Vinaya, the Abhi Vinaya, there's no such thing as the books of Abhi Vinaya. Like, just like the, just like just now the higher Dhamma means the uh, most, more important Dhamma. So the uh, Abhi Vinaya refers to the more important parts of the Vinaya. Uh, so uh, a monk uh, should be familiar uh, with the uh, higher teachings in the Dhamma and in the Vinaya uh, and uh, apply them. A forest dwelling monk should apply himself to those liberations that are peaceful and immaterial, transcending forms. For there are those who ask a forest dwelling monk questions on the liberations that are peaceful and immaterial, transcending forms. If he does not apply himself to those liberations, there will be those who would say of him, What has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes, since he does not apply himself to those liberations that are peaceful and immaterial, transcending forms? Since there will be those who would say this of him, a forest dwelling monk should apply himself to those liberations that are peaceful and immaterial, transcending forms. Uh, this most likely refers to the Arupas. Lah. Uh, uh, immaterial jhanas. Uh. A forest dwelling monk should apply himself to superhuman states uh, or, or uh, su uh, superhuman or supernormal states. Uh. For there are those who ask a forest dwelling monk questions on the superhuman states. If he does not apply himself to those states, there will be those who would say of him, what has this venerable forest dweller gained by his dwelling alone in the forest, doing as he likes? since he does not apply himself to superhuman states. Since there will be those who say this of him, a forest-dwelling monk should apply himself to superhuman states. And this is said, the Venerable Mahamoglana asked the Venerable Sariputta, Friend Sariputta, should these things be undertaken and practiced only by a forest-dwelling monk or by a town-dwelling monk as well? And he replied, Friend Moglana, these things should be undertaken and practiced not only by a forest-dwelling monk, but, but by a town-dwelling monk as well. Uh, that's the end of the sutta. So, this, the last two uh, is the, 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 the higher jhanas uh, and the uh, uh, psychic powers. Uh, the six abhinya, including uh, uh, destruction of the asavas, uh, liberation. Uh, so, uh, so the Venerable Sariputta standard is very high la, because during the Buddha's time uh, there were many Arahans la. and so because there were many Arahans uh, uh, it, it was not uh, sort of uh, considered uh, beyond a monk's reach la, that, that, at that time la, unlike nowadays la. Uh, so uh, this Sutta is quite uh, important for a monk la, who wants to uh, practice uh, uh, well, uh, uh, 